Good morning and welcome back to Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at MarketSite is Peter Vahinsky. He is the Senior Vice President over at Data Art. We're going to focus on four global fintech trends that are dominating for 2018. Peter, thank you very much for joining me at MarketSite today. So let's get right into it. Um, why will artificial intelligence, or what we call AI, be the game changer? Sure. Um, artificial intelligence, I think there's several factors that are driving the proliferation of AI. We have the ongoing democratization of AI tools as they become more accessible. The algorithms themselves become more and more sophisticated, get more and more processing power at your fingertips, get more and more cheap storage, and that will drive more and more companies, including financial institutions, to experiment with, with AI. And we see this clearly in the demand from our clients to operationalize AI and sort of design and, and deploy AI solutions. Um, and applications are so exciting because they're practically boundless. You can see from the usual suspects such as cybersecurity, fraud detection, and something like banking, to trading strategies, trade execution. You see things like risk management, uh, post-trade allocations, reconciliations, that sort of thing, all the way to uh, more complex areas such as collateral optimization, uh, liquidity forecasting, stress testing, uh, counterparty uh, credit risk, and that sort of thing. As AI solutions get more and more uh, adopted by, by enterprise across industries, not just finance, we may begin to see the changes to the underlying operating models of companies, and that will cause new governance structures to have to emerge to deal with that. So, and, and a lot of sort of ongoing monitoring for impact and uh, change management, and that's why it's so profound and impactful. Well, what about the war for talent, and what skills are most sought in the area of AI? For sure, I mean, it's going to take a little bit of time for the labor market to catch up to the new demand as the profile of this demand has changed. So it's not it's not frictionless, but. Market's clear, and uh, this market will clear as well. It's just going to take it a few years. So there's going to be there's going to be a, a, a period of time over which you will see those skills like data science, AI, come to premium. Well, it's interesting because you made a, a great point in the piece that Data Art put out there. Is there a threat to jobs due to AI? Would you say that fear has always been there for the past God knows how many hundreds of years, ever since the beginnings of the industrial revolution? That automation is going to destroy jobs. It never does. It always does quite the opposite. AI is going to create jobs, it's going to drive value, it's going to drive prosperity. The jobs themselves may end up being different. They mm -hmm. most certainly will be, but the sheer number of jobs will only increase. It happened, again, it happened across centuries multiple times, it will happen again. All right, and so for, let's talk about trend number two. Now, how will big data um, play a part in the success of AI solutions and those business sure. models? Well, data is the your foundation for your anything you do with AI, uh, as well as many other things. You, you must have a robust data infrastructure to be able to glean value from AI. In fact, the ability to uh, gather, aggregate, uh, normalize, and analyze data has become, is becoming uh, more and more of a vital competency across companies, across industries. Um, but this, this ability to treat data as a vital and uh, super valuable asset that it is, is not quite universally manifested in organizational capabilities and tools and skills and, and staff across companies. And that's something we tend to see a lot of uh, growing demand for as well, uh, various data management improvement initiatives and programs. All right, and the third trend is improved digitization mm -hmm. to improve the user experience. It's one of my favorite topics. Uh, digitization is it's very easy to get wrong. Um, basically, our default interface for pretty much everything these days is a super intuitive app on your phone. It's always in your pocket. It's always just a few simple taps away. Don't make me think kind of mentality. I know how to get what I need how to accomplish my end. I know where I'm at, what's going on. Imagine you're waiting for Uber or for your Lyft. You know the, the car's make, model, and license plate. You know the driver's name. You know their face. You know when they're arriving. You know when they're going to be making it to your destination. You know how much it's going to cost you. How come I can't have that same sort of experience with my insurance company processing my claim or with my bank? You know? So digitalization, to get it right, uh, it takes much, much more than just slapping a, a mobile app on top of a fragmented, siloed organization capabilities and tools. So unlike fintech startups, incumbents many times are organized, rather than being organized around the customer need itself, and therefore the customer experience, they're organized around product and functional silos, right? And so that creates a huge challenge in digitalization. But, you know, it's an exciting time because uh, these programs, these initiatives in larger, older organizations, A, they hold tremendous promise and tremendous value can be unlocked, but B, they're really no longer optional. So. We're excited to be part of uh, you know, some of those programs in the industry. All right, let's get the fourth and final trend, and that would be a breakthrough in the performance problems that are, is associated with blockchain. Yeah, I mean, performance and blockchain have been uh, the talk for, for a long time, but I, I, honestly, I don't believe performance is going to be the biggest challenge necessarily. I mean, 
you know, enough very clever engineers have not spent enough time quite yet dealing with that specific problem. When they attack that challenge, it's going to fall, like, like they tend to do. Um, other problems may be a little trickier even to address, things like interoperability, things like governance, things like reversibility, dispute resolution, rule of law, where you marry the, the world of the digital with the world where there are jurisdictions and legislations and physical identities and physical consequences for actors. So uh, I'm not worried about performance. Uh, it's much more exciting to see what is going to get done about those other things. Um, but even beyond that, I think what we really want to listen for is when people stop talking about blockchain. Because when they stop talking about blockchain as a platform or a technology per se and start talking about solutions that have been built in the technologies, that's when we know that it has truly arrived and sort of matured. All right, well thank you very much for joining us at Market Side today. Thank you. And thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.